All right, guys, so I want to have a little bit of fun today. I started this YouTube channel for some of the OGs out there. This was an NFL Draft channel. I still love the NFL Draft, and I still want to look at it once in a while. Um, and after one full week of the preseason, I want to kind of take a look at some of the draft picks and how they did. And so I want to kind of rip through these. Yes, I am using PFF as my primary resource. I've got a good snapshot of every single rookie, all the stats, the grades, the advanced statistics, and all that. If you don't like PFF, you've got some big bone to pick because they once said they didn't like your player and you're convinced they're good. I really don't care. You can click off and go somewhere else. It, it's such an irrelevant and stupid argument to me. Um, but anyways, that's what I want to focus on. And I'm sure some people are going to end up hating PFF because I said that your player was bad or something. I, I don't, again, don't care. Just go. It's dumb uh i i do realize also that this is the uh preseason it's just one week but it's also just fun that's what football is it's fun we get to have fun we get to look at it we get to overreact and if you don't want to do that and you want to be the guy that just sits in the corner with your arms crossing it doesn't matter it's just one week then just go ahead and do that it doesn't matter we're, we're gonna we're gonna look at some of this stuff so um again a lot of people are really big into the draft and then when the draft ends it's just they just everybody just kind of goes off and does their own thing right so I want to uh, take a look at, we'll start off with the quarterbacks. There are 19 quarterbacks that I have here that are rookies that ended up taking a snap. And so um, let us start with some of the bigger name guys that ended up playing and see how they did. And then I want to kind of highlight some of the really good players. So first of all, we have got Mr. Bryce Young. And... Uh, uh, Interestingly enough, all the best quarterbacks were some of the worst quarterbacks. <laughs> they were, in fact, um, the absolute worst passing grade on here was one of the gun ones we're going to be talking about very, very soon. But out of 19 quarterbacks, Bryce Young got a passing grade that ranked him 11th, and he also was 11th overall. He had um, only seven dropbacks. He completed uh, four of six, 66%. For 21 yards, 3.5 yard average, no touchdowns, no interceptions. He had zero big time throws, zero turnover worthy plays. So it was a very bland and vanilla kind of performance. 72.2 passer rating. Um, for reference, 60 is average on PFF, so he was below average. But you're probably not massively concerned um, if you are a Panthers fan. Maybe you are because I mean, let's be honest, we traded away quite a bit to get this guy. But again, he, he didn't really get uh, a ton of opportunities. C.J. Stroud, again, we'll put in the caveat, hey, it's just one performance or whatever. He was actually the lowest graded out of 19 quarterbacks, including some of the undrafted free agent guys that went out there just for the heck of it. <laughs> so that that does suck. Even if you're not worried, I'm not telling you to be worried, but that, that does have to suck a little bit, right? Seven dropbacks, again, didn't play a ton. He completed two of four. For 13 yards and a pick, he had a 29.9 PFF grade and a 34.3 passing grade, zero big-time throws, one turnover-worthy play. He had a passer rating of 17.7. Um, after that, you got Anthony Richardson. Richardson's actually looked quite good. I, I had al almost no expectations for Anthony Richardson. I've barely been keeping track. I mean, I, I've been keeping track. I've got my Twitter list, and I'm, I'm going through every single camp update. I'm, I'm primarily trying to look at Packers stuff, but as I go, I have guys updating for all the teams. And yes, Richardson's thrown some bad passes just like everybody else has, but he's been impressive from what I've seen in the snapshots. And um, I'm seeing all kinds of, of highlights and everything else. He was the seventh highest graded, which doesn't seem super great for, you know, the one of the top guys. But he had a 66.7 PFF grade, and uh, he was actually the eighth highest graded as far as um, overall grades with a 70.2. So he graded out quite well, and, and there's, a, there's a very defined gap. Anthony Richardson is at the bottom of the good quarterbacks. He had a 70 overall grade. The next highest is Tommy DeVito at a 59. So it drops from, there's zero 60s. There's zero average quarterbacks. You were either good or really freaking good, which we'll get to, or just kind of bad. Again, reiterate for the 90th time, not trying to overreact, just pointing out what had happened. But Anthony Richardson was 7 of 12, 58.3% for 67 yards, no touchdowns, and a pick. 
He had one big time throw, one turnover worthy play. Um, 2.17 time to throw is actually really impressive, especially for mobile quarterbacks. Mobile quarterbacks tend to want to like make plays with their legs. I haven't been watching to see how that looked, but it's impressive to see a guy operate just in rhythm, just quick, 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 quick. Cause we, you know, he can kill people with his legs. I saw the highlight of him um, take off on a run and then just lower his shoulder and lay a guy out. So look, Anthony Richardson is the reason guys like him get drafted is because he doesn't have a ceiling. If he can be a premier passer, he's going to be the best by a mile quarterback. But the problem is you look at him and say, yeah, but he's probably not going to be that good of a passer. So when he comes out and he's seven of 12, he did throw a pick that sucks. And, um, but he, but again, he graded out just fine. And it was just a 66 passing grade, which is still fine. But then 70 overall, which was what he does with his legs and everything else. Um, he's got a big time throw mixed in. And again, the, the time to throw at 2.17, he's not just holding onto the ball and running around trying to do backyard football type stuff. Um, it's, it's looking quite good for him already. Then you get to Will Levis. He was 13th out of 19 as far as overall grades with a 46.4. He had a 48.3 passing grade. He completed 9 of 14 for 85 yards, no touchdowns and a pick. A lot of picks. In fact, it looks like there might have been more interceptions thrown by the rookies than, than not. But um, one big-time throw and two turnover-worthy plays. He's one of only three quarterbacks who had more than one turnover-worthy play, which obviously is just a pass that could have, would have, should have been picked. He had two um Stetson Bennett had three and then uh, Tanner Morgan had two he was the other one way at the bottom if you're looking at overall grade he was lower than Stroud was so uh not a super fantastic day for um for him but um he had a 51.2 passer rating and a 3.1 time to throw so he was holding on to the ball obviously way too long then we get to three quarterbacks. One of them didn't play a ton, and that's Tyson Bagent. Bagent? I don't remember. I know his dad very well, but I don't know how to say his last name. The arm wrestling phenom. But um, I honestly didn't even know the Chicago Bears got him. He had a really good outing. He was 4 of 5, 37 yards. Had an 87.6 grade, 86.5. Aiden O'Connell has the highest PFF grade of anybody. Got picked up by the uh, Raiders in the fourth round. He completed 15 of 18 for 141 yards and a touchdown. One big time throw at 5.3% and a time to throw of 2.26, 117.8 passer rating. But if I had to crown somebody that is having the best preseason so far, it's a little unfair because he's played two games, but Dorian Thompson Robinson, who was picked in the fifth round for Cleveland, is right now, I would say, the go-to quarterback if you had to pick somebody who's been the most impressive. Now, it's not as interesting because he's not going to end up starting, maybe sometime down the road, but probably not. But still, just based on what we've seen in preseason as a rookie, far and away the most impressive. And the reason I say that is because he was getting a ton of hype after week one. He was 8 of 11, 72.7% completion percentage, 90.1% adjusted completion percentage because on that 8 of 11, two of them were dropped. But he had uh, 82 yards and a touchdown. Had a 79.8 passing grade, 81.7 overall. But then he comes back week one. He's 9 of 10 for 102 yards and a touchdown. So far, through two games, he has 17 of 21 for 184 yards and two touchdowns. And again, two of those were drops. He has a 90.5 completion percentage. And uh, 135 passer rating through two games and that doesn't even include the rushing he he adds uh four rushes for 47 yards on top of all that as a 73.7 rushing grade 90.2 overall grade for the uh for the two weeks and an 85.6 passing grade so if it was just for the one week you'd probably have to say aiden o'connell maybe edged him out a little bit although dorian tom well no he just had he just had the one the one week but considering it's been back to back and and you know the consistency is a big deal i would say dorian thompson robinson has been the most impressive so far other guys that are on here um of course i got to shout out sean clifford of the green bay packers he ranked seventh he was 20 of 26 208 yards he had the absolute most yards of anybody by a mile he probably would have had the highest grade however he is also the only rookie with two interceptions he is a mini brett Favre. we're very excited to have him no he's not going to take over the job for uh for jordan love that's absolutely not going to happen um some other guys here jake hayner was a guy that i was really high on in the draft i do a little 
like my own big board, which really just aggregates a ton of data. And then I just put values on each data. How much does this weight, this, that, or the other? Jake Hayner just came out incredibly high. Um, he was 10 of 17, 105 yards, a touchdown and a pick. He had 40, 46 grade, 45 passing grade. So it is what it is. Hendon Hooker didn't get a chance to play. I actually also really liked Hedden and Hooker. Um, he's a little bit on the older side, obviously, but I was kind of excited for what he could do. Anyways, those are the quarterbacks I wanted to talk about. And um, stay tuned. We'll do a couple other videos for some other positions, but uh, some real solid quarterbacks out there so far.